Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake and Planet Zoo for the first time in quite a while. Today we're going to be delving into the brand new Conservation Pack DLC that was released last week for Planet Zoo. Uh, first up, huge thanks to Frontier for providing me with a key. Um, and for, I just want to clear a few couple things up before we get started. I know it's been quite a while since we've been in October Lake, but we're back here now. And also I know it's been quite a while since the DLC dropped. It dropped quite a bit earlier last week, and of course uh, I haven't actually been able to get into the game and play it. That's because I felt tremendously ill last week, and I have no clue what caused it. It wasn't COVID, I did a test and everything. Um, but yeah, I just was so out of it for the whole week, and the worst of it was actually on the day the DLC released, which was such a shame, because I really, really, really wanted to play it. Um, because it is a gorgeous DLC, I love it, I love the animal choices, I love the foliage, there's so much great foliage in this new pack, uh, so the building materials are fantastic. And like I said, uh, the animals especially stand out to me, but the foliage... Um, is really really good. There's a lot of great kind of like wildflowery type things, a lot of grasses which I really like. Uh, some really nice new trees as well which I think slipped under the radar a bit but they're really nice uh, just to put into your parks. So I'm a big fan of the new DLC, just really really liking it. And today I thought we'd hop into October Lake and we'd use one of my favorites of the new animals which is the Siamang. So uh, yeah the Siamang actually is an animal that I'm quite familiar with because back when I grew up in Malaysia, um, siamangs were found or still are found in the kind of central forest of the kind of um, of the western half of Malaysia. So eastern half of Malaysia is essentially on the northern bit of Borneo, um, but siamangs uh, generally can be found in Indonesia and also that peninsula bit of Malaysia. So in Indonesia they're found on Sumatra Island. In Malaysia, they're found kind of towards the central Malaysian peninsula um, because there is a lot of forest along that central bit, a lot of highlands. And they have these really, really distinctive uh, vocal cues. They have these really loud calls and they do these songs that you can hear from all across the forest. It's really, really incredible. And I remember going to forest as a kid and that noise being just like... You could hear it so far away, you wouldn't even see the animal, but you'd hear that sound for, for miles and miles away, and it's really quite distinctive. You knew immediately what it was. Um, they're a gorgeous, gorgeous gibbon. Uh, gibbons, of course, are a species of... Uh, not a species, they're a group of apes, so these are considered lesser apes. Whenever you see the words uh, lesser or greater in biology, they never really mean what they mean, they're more so just ways to differentiate different types of a certain species or a certain group, for example. Uh, so we do have the siamang as a type of gibbon, but there's plenty of other types of gibbons too. There are law gibbons, there's agile gibbons, and other animals like that. So, so um, the crested gibbon was an animal that was in the tycoon too, if you might remember. But gibbons are super interesting in the sense they've got much, much longer arms than legs, so kind of similar to some of the other apes like chimpanzees or... Uh, even orangutans, and they're really, really beautiful uh, animals. But they've got these lovely kind of like black sheen to their fur, and they are amazing at climbing. Which is why we're building them a climbing frame, as you can see on screen here. This is uh, the climbing frame for the for the siamang gibbons that we're building, using the pre-built kind of not pre-built, but the the climbing frames that were provided in the game. It allows them to do brachiation, which of course is the type of movement that allows them to swing along uh, a straight line like this. And they're really good at it and it looks very cool in the game. What I used here is I used some of the blueprints that came with the, the DLC for the brachiation frames. And from there I just kind of extrapolated and built my own version. And I think it ended up looking pretty decent. Uh, my boyfriend August has just emerged as well, if you want to say hi August. Hi August. August says hi. He just... <laughs> But yeah, he's just appeared briefly. Had you, um, do you have any thoughts about the, the gibbons, the siamang? I like how they go, whoo, whoo. Yeah, that's how they make the sound. Really cute. That's all. That's the only thought I have about them. I uh, think they are fun. They are my friends and I love them dearly and I went to high school with them. You Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you, August. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> but yes, that, as you can see, I'm also adding in a little bit of additional stuff here. Uh, for the brachiation frames, just to add a little bit more interest and some places for them to sit down. Uh, they end up being able to climb all across this habitat pretty decently, and you'll see that in the cinematics. 
I add some ropes and stuff as well to make it look a bit more interesting. But yeah, I, I thought it'd be good to put them here in October Lake because we actually do have a Southeast Asian section. And the Siemang, of course, Southeast Asian animal, I thought it would fit here uh, pretty well. And I think they, they do. It's a very nice little nook between the sun bear and the proboscis monkeys. And the binturong is just across the one side over there, the clouded leopard. The doll is a bit further down. So we've got a really nice mix of animals on this side and I'm really, really pleased to have them in here. And I think they look really good. The habitat itself is going to be kind of like an aviary style habitat. So we're going to have mesh fencing across the sides and up over the top to make sure they don't escape. But it gives them plenty and plenty of vertical space that we can even add more onto later. So they have lots and lots of space to climb. I think that's a really important thing with a lot of climbing animals in zoos is to give them not only horizontal space, but vertical space. And um, one of the primate habitats which I really like in real life is the the Hanuman Lango habitat in London Zoo. It's a really nice one. It's very much themed around the Gur National Park in India, which is kind of the whole area of theming. Um, but it gives them lots of space both to go upwards and to go kind of around. So they have lots and lots of space to explore and climb and do all sorts of, you know, standard uh, monkey business. Uh, that was a pun. <laughs> But yeah, um, the, the habitat itself from here on isn't super complex. Once we start working on the mesh and stuff like that, we are, generally speaking, coming towards the end of it. And now you're going to see me start to work on the foliage. The foliage in this new pack is amazing. Uh, really, really big fan of it. We have uh, a lot of nice grasses, which you'll see me use in a second. But first off, we're going to try and keep the theming to kind of similar to what we have around here. Because of course, even though we've got new foliage, you're going to make the habitat fit in with the habitat around it. Oh, and also just putting in a quick shelter up here for the for the gibbons to just come and have a nice rest up here. Uh, the foliage itself, I think, is really, really useful in the taiga biome and the temperate biome. I, I would struggle to use it, I think, in the tropical biome because the colors don't match particularly well. Even in the temperate, they get a little bit saturated. In the taiga biome here, though, it's perfect. Like, all the new grasses and stuff fit in really, really well, and I think they just... Um, blend in super nicely. That's one of the new trees actually, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's a nice tropical tree that I think didn't stand out too much, so I, I was happy enough to put it here. Also looking at the proboscis monkey habitat and seeing what I put in there and then transferring it over as well, just to maintain some degree of, you know, like, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Homogeneity or something like that? But yeah. Um, and here you see me putting down these grasses. They're so pretty, I'm loving the wildflower kind of vibe. Um, not too many actual flowers. I end up using the, what's it called? Yorkshire fog grass, I think, which looks really good. It, I, I'm guessing it's just a general, like, generic UK, like, grass variety that you find around here, but it looks so good. Um, adds so much texture to the ground that you see me use it right there. And, um, it's really cool seeing the gibbons, like, hang out in it later. They're not, they're not particularly big animals. Um, well, they're, they're big in real life, but in the game they don't seem particularly large. Uh, which is, which is, um makes them kind of sink into the grass a little bit, which is really cute actually, because you see their heads poking out over the top. Talking a little bit more about the gibbon, I want to mention they did a really great job of animating the, um, they've got this throat pouch. It's like this little pouch that inflates really big when they make their calls and they animated it really well in the game. Um, they just look really cool. I would highly recommend, by the way, if you want to know a little bit more about how these gibbons look and sound in real life, just uh, type into YouTube, uh, Siamang Gibbon and one of the first videos you're going to see is <laughs> fantastic. It's a great representation of how they do the calls. I think it's got a couple million views, something like that. And the top comment on that is just hilarious because it just says, imagine being trapped in a state of constant parkour and all you can do is make a whoo noise. <laughs> and I just look completely lost it at that because I've never heard anyone describe an ape as being stuck in a state of constant parkour. And I just... <laughs> just absolutely lost it. I think if I was stuck in a constant state of parkour, I would also go, Aah! Yep, <laughs> yep, that was August also agreeing. If if you didn't hear him, I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we're coming up to the end of the video now. Uh, we're just doing a little bit more of the, um, the fencing now. As you can see, it's a very tall fencing to make it so that, you know, obviously these animals have tremendous uh, climbing space. And they have tremendous climbing prowess. They're extremely good climbers. And you may notice, of course, they don't have a tail. That's because they are an ape. 
Um, they do remind me a lot of things like spider monkeys, which are, you know, they have similar kind of really nice dark fur. They have very similar climbing patterns, but of course, spider monkeys are monkeys. They have these massive, massive tails. And that's kind of the big difference in how they move is that siamangs and stuff like that, they do not have that extra limb, essentially, because monkeys treat that tail as a limb. And they're all prehensile. Well, not all monkeys have prehensile tails, but the ones that do, those generally are used very, very heavily in climbing. So you can tell why the, the siamang doesn't quite move the same way a monkey would. But they move very cool in the game too. They like we'll you'll see in the CM cinematics the brachiation movement. Really, Frontier has done a really, really good job with that. I, I wasn't expecting it to look as fluid as it does, but it does look quite fluid. Obviously, not perfect. You know, it's not never going to be. It's just the nature of you know animating models like this, which have to calculate for new spaces and all that. But it looks great to me, so I'm I'm more than happy with that. Final bits and pieces here, just putting on the roof, and then we're pretty much done. So that's what it for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being patient with me. I know very, very few videos nowadays. I'm just incredibly, incredibly busy. So thank you so much for the patience. Um, thanks for uh, waiting as well. I know, you know, these the pack has come out for like nearly over a week now. And I've just been extremely, extremely ill. Feel a lot better now though. So <laughs> that's that. And we'll have this video and we've got another one with the Simtahorn Oryx coming out. Uh, hopefully the day after this one. So yeah, look forward to that one. Brilliant. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.